freaking morning. You know? Ooh, that sprinkler got me. Ah! <laughs> as much as I hate waking up, I mean, I'm, I'm not a morning person, but once I am actually outside and doing things, morning is by far my favorite time of day. So I thought I'd grab the camera and bring you guys along and kind of show you what I do every morning. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. The last couple of days I've had to feed my 10 new pigs plus my two mature pigs but yesterday the mature pigs got harvested so I can actually take one thing off of my morning to-do list but I think taking care of these 10 in the long run is going to be actually a lot more work so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and mix up their feed what I'm giving them for now is some fermented corn mixed with soybean meal and then some uh, Redmond mineral mixed in with that. And they seem to really like it. So in the bucket is the fermented corn and this is the soybean meal. For now, I'm doing six scoops of soybean meal. I'm trying to make this about a 20 to 22% protein ration. And the SR65 is not as critical how much I put in there, but I've been doing about a half a scoop. And yeah, that's what they're getting. The new little pigs are still in the stock trailer. I'm thinking that today I'm gonna get them moved out into the big pen. And really I need to get them out of here because the automatic waterer that I made for them uh, that I might have posted a video about. I didn't think it had a lot of pressure and I didn't think that they would make a big mess with it. Well, I was wrong. Pigs find a way to make a mess with almost anything and this is no different. Since the automatic water is kind of a new design, I don't trust it quite yet. <laughs> But I actually have I actually have seen them use it a few times so I'm pretty sure that now it's working I want to show you them eating but as long as I have the door open no pigs will get on that side of the feed dish so I'm gonna close the door so that everybody can get around that thing to eat So when you're feeding fermented feed, the most important thing to remember every morning is to get the next batch soaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. As they get bigger, I'll probably transition off of fermented feed and go with like milled wheat. Uh, that, that's the plan at this point. And the only reason for that, I like fermented feed, but the one thing that I don't like about it, especially feeding a large group of pigs, is I kind of want to free feed them and that's hard to do with fermented feed because if they don't finish it the feed can start to mold. If I have milled dry wheat and soybean meal mixed together then I can just fill feeders up and they can eat as much as they want. I can give them a several day supply and I don't have to worry about things like mold. Okay. Well, I think that's it for 
chores here at the house. Now we're gonna head down to the ranch. All right, first thing on the schedule over here at the ranch is moving cows. And I can see, by the way, they're all bunched up in the corner here that they've been waiting for me. So I'm gonna turn this hot wire off and get them moved. I think a new job for the to-do list is to make a little ladder or a couple little ladders on this fence here so I don't always have to climb through barbed wire. I really don't like doing that. Well, it wouldn't be a pasture move if three or four calves didn't mess it all up. So now I guess I got to walk all the way down to the end and walk them back up here. Hopefully they get this figured out pretty soon. I've noticed that <clears throat> before I brought the cows home from the winter pasture, the cows that were here, the cows and calves that were here had this down pretty good. But now that we've got the cows from the winter pasture, we've got to teach them all over again. So. Let's start walking. Yeah, these calves are gonna run all the way down to the end. And you know, it's like this every time, but that's okay because it's almost become, you know, as, as calves messing up the pasture move has become a tradition. So has me and Callie going for a little walk in the morning. All right, kids, let's go to the other end. <clears throat> let's go down there like we do every other time, every single day. They're gonna figure it out one day. They have to. Oh, he found a shortcut. Can you guys do that? There, success. All right, cows are happy. Got a couple more things we need to do. <clears throat> One last one we gotta feed over here and that's the bull. The crowd tub here in the corral is the only thing that will hold him. He has broke out of every other pen that I've put him in. And by next year, I'll have my bullpen done and I won't have to worry about this. He'll have a better place to stay. But for now, he's just had to live in here because he won't stay anywhere else. And this is the only pen that I have that's all steel that he can't really break out of so far. He probably could if he really wanted to, but he hasn't yet. So uh, fortunately, he's only got a couple more days until he's out with the cows. So until then, he's just gotta be patient. This year I am going to go get another bull to run with this guy and I'm hoping to do that tomorrow. But before I turn them out with the cows, my plan, or at least what I've been advised that I should do, is to put the second new bull in the big corral to where these guys share a fence line and just sort of let them, you know, 
talk to each other and get used to each other and that after a, a day or so that if I turn them out that they'll probably still fight a little bit but hopefully it'll sort of minimize the the intensity of that fight this guy's old and he's fairly good size so I feel like he would be the uh, the one that comes out on top in a fight but I don't know what the other bull is going to look like that I end up getting if it's a younger smaller bull then I won't really worry about it usually when you have a big bull and a small bull they don't really fight because a small bull knows that he's not going to win but if you have two bulls that are pretty equally sized that's when you can have problems because neither one of them want to let up right here you can see one of the modifications that this bull made to the barn when he was in this larger pen and i don't know if the gopro is going to show it very well because the the angle of the lens is weird but this wall is bowed in pretty significantly um there's there's like a cross brace right here that's mostly kept its shape but everything below that is bowed in bad so i've got to take all this tin down and either straighten it or replace it with new tin and i might even add a couple more boards in here just to sort of prevent this from happening again but that is why i haven't been able to bring hay over yet because i need to get that done and well there's a few reasons but that's probably the biggest one and while we're down here at the ranch this isn't really part of my morning routine but i thought i would introduce a new project that you guys are going to be seeing on the channel I got this trailer generously donated to me by a friend of mine and there's a couple of things that I've got planned for it. I'm not really sure which way I would rather go with it and I would kind of like to hear what your guys' thoughts are. So my first thought is to weld a hitch on the back of my other car hauler trailer and then set it up so I could tow like a set of doubles. So I could hook this trailer up to the back of the trailer that I've already got and then I could haul like twice as many round bales as I normally can. And when I'm moving hay back here to the ranch, I think that would be a real advantage and save me a lot of trips. In order to make this thing worthy for hauling round bales, though, it would need a lot of work. This deck is pretty rotten. The tires are questionable. The wheel bearings are questionable. Um, and the frame, it would need a little bit of reinforcement. I don't think that it can handle that much weight in the condition that it's in right now. The other life that I'm considering for this trailer is to make my portable feeder with it. Now I could take my uh, third section of my Lakeland round feeder, put it on the back. I've got these two feeder panels that I could put on the side. I would just have to modify the tongue a little bit to fold up out of the way and then make a fourth side on this end. But I could drop like three or four round bales in this thing and use it as a mobile feeder. That would be great over at the winter pasture and then I can even see um, instances where I would use that around here. I'm really leaning towards making the feeder out of this just because um, I've thought about it a lot and I think that's actually going to work really good with my program here. Not to mention the fact that to get this thing ready to actually haul some weight it's going to take a lot more money. To do the feeder idea I have pretty much got everything that I need to do that I just need to find the time. So I'm not really sure it's it's nice to have options. Pulling a set of doubles with round bills on it I think would just be kind of cool. It'd make an awesome video but I'm not sure exactly how legal that is. Um, you know I, I guess I would have to go get my doubles endorsement for my CDL and, and then we might be okay. Uh, I'm not really sure. Let me know what you guys want to see and I'll take that in, into consideration. But I think we're going to go feeder on this thing because I'm going to need a feeder. And we are full swing into irrigation season, which means a lot of mornings are spent with me checking water. These checks are only about halfway done right now, so I don't need to do anything, but it's always nice to get out here and let Callie run around in the water. She seems to enjoy it. That's going to do it for this morning. I think I got everything done that I needed to get done. 
So now I'm going to go feed myself. And Mrs. FTR always makes me a special cup of coffee. And about this time of morning, that's what I really start looking forward to. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.